Right. No, no shame in our game. I was asked to speak today uh, to give a testimony of myself. Yes. And my testimony, how I came to have a strong faith in God, has a lot to do with Brother Sylvester's ministry. Mm -hmm. Pastor Sylvester, Brother Sylvester, he's all... All the same. We're all <laughs> That's right. I don't do much public speaking. Um, but anyway, uh, okay. I, I just let you all know that I, I grew up in a, um, a very conservative church in the country in Pennsylvania. Uh, Brethren in Christ uh, Church. Um, very traditional, orthodox. Um, learned a lot of sound biblical truths. Unfortunately, I learned more truths than I learned about grace. So unfortunately, I don't know, maybe it wasn't the church. I loved that church, by the way. And that church was an awesome church. I had a lot of great friends there. But for me personally, um, perhaps part of it had to do with my father, who was not a believer at the time. Right? So I kind of assumed that that's the man I need to be. Right? And if my man is not from God, if my man, if my... The, the guy I focus on in my home mm -hmm. is not leading in devotionals. If he's not reading his word every day or on a regular basis or mm -hmm. leading us and teaching us, you know, from this book, mm -hmm. where is my faith right. going to be, right. Right. Right? right? And if I don't learn about grace at home, I'm not going to learn about grace anywhere. <laughs> so... I lived a very uh, roller coaster ride of a faith from being a child. I, I, I was baptized when I was 16. I was uh, in love with God as a kid. I, I know that I was. Um, however, I got into high school years. I started to rebel. Mm -hmm. And uh, can anyone re relate to rebelling? Can anyone relate to not yeah. being so close to the Lord? So I've had hot moments. I've had cold moments. I was totally backslidden for six years. Right. And then I came back to the Lord uh, in a Vineyard Christian Fellowship in, in Columbus, Ohio, where I was going to school and uh, went, to, went to work. And uh, that was great, to come back to God. Yes. And then I took another dip. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not long after that. So I never learned how to have a consistency to right. my faith. I never learned how mm -hmm. to actually have that personal relationship. Other people would tell me about it. I never got it. Yeah. And never understood. Right. And I never read much. I knew all the time that I should have been reading my Bible. So every once in a while, it was a good idea to crack open the Dusty book. Because it was Dusty. That's <laughs> true. And uh, so I'd read something in Romans, and it never completely made sense, and I didn't get into it so much. Mm -hmm. But I read it just because I knew it was something good to do. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, in 2006, and you know, I, I didn't like school, so I wasn't much of a reader at all <laughs> to begin with. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. So after two, you know, after my high school and college, I, I didn't, and I, I went. I was trained as a, a computer IT related field. So anyway, I, I just wasn't much of a reader. In late 2006, God put it on my heart to read through his word in 2007, which I've never done before. I wasn't much of a reader. At the time, I didn't say, I didn't tell people it was from God. But now when I look back, yes. I know where that thought comes from. That thought doesn't come from anyone else but God. Right, right, right. I wasn't going to church at all. Right. I might have been watching it on the internet at the time. I don't uh -huh. remember. Yeah. The only spiritual thing I was doing was a Wednesday morning Bible study, uh -huh. which was at least a good atmosphere to be in on a weekly basis. Right. <laughs> Surrounding myself with other men that loved God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so anyway, so God put it on my heart to read through the Bible. And not only did he do that, he had me tell close friends. Friends that, you know, I just wanted to share it with. Hey, I, I got this idea to read through the Bible in 2007. I've never done it before. I've tried before, didn't do it, and uh, just thought I'd let you know, right? right? Well, I called my brother in Pennsylvania, yes. and, I, and he's four years older than me. We, we always gotten along, except when we were kids, we wrestled together. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I said, hey, Jeff, I thought I'd let you know that I got this idea to read through the Bible. And he says, why don't I join you? After some thought, after talking about it. And I said, you know what? That's a great idea. I never thought about it. I never wanted to ask anyone, would you please read through the whole Bible with me in the year, knowing that I've never done it before. Right, right, right. That's great. 
And then I thought, well, if Jeff's going to join me, why don't I ask someone else? So I asked another friend, a <laughs> local friend, Joe Hill. I thought, well, you know, people need to read it, you know, the more fun we'll have. So my friend Joe Hill, uh, who's now in Irvine, um, he, he started reading through with me, with his new newlywed of a wife. Okay. This is his new wife. Yeah. So, so that was cool for him. But anyway, so that whole year, we decided, since he was in Pennsylvania, I was here, we decided instead of getting the same Bibles, you know, to read through the reading plan, we went to uh, Gideons.org. And they have a, a morning and an evening plan. Old Testament, New Testament, every day. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, so we started reading through together. And it was like an ongoing Bible study. Okay. My brother and I, we'd call each other every every, every week, uh, about weekly. Uh -huh. And we'd say, hey, did you, did you check out that story about Abraham this week? Did you yeah. check out what happened with Moses this week? Uh -huh. It was like reading it for the first, most of it was for the first time. Yeah. I've never read through the whole Old Testament. Right. Look what you've been missing. It changed <laughs> my life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those are so there's things that happened that year that I'm not going to go into right now. Amen. You know, Amen. Amen. Some miraculous yes. things. Yes. Yes. But more important, uh, as important <laughs> as reading his word every day, Yes. was in my heart, because I know people read their Bibles all the time, they don't necessarily get it. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, atheists can read this book right. mm -hmm. and not hear God. Anybody can read it. Right. So, absolutely. absolutely. Anyway, it's not about the book, being read. just the book. Right. It's about opening your heart right. to you the go. book. Right. 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 So my prayers early in 2007 is really what changed things. The book and the prayers go hand in hand. You, you need both right. yes. Yes. to open the heart, right. to keep the right. soil fertile. Correct. Hallelujah. <laughs> it was the prayer of saying, God, I want to know you more. Mm -hmm. Please reveal you. yourself to me. Um. Were my prayers. I want to get to know you more. Yes. The relationship yes. that I never knew Man. could be became. Yes. So I got to know God throughout 2007, and I got totally convicted that I need to be reading His Word every year, for at least five years. Wow. Right? So I'm on my seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm on my fourth year. Wow. And I'm, I don't plan on stopping. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Only because... <laughs> now, the, you know, you're, you're, talking to, you're listening to a guy that hasn't been a reader. Yeah. And and God's given me this appetite like I can't even explain. Mm -hmm. that's good. And I, that's a blessing. Yes. yes. Because I hunger for this book every day. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, uh, my testimony to God is to say that he took someone that was not a reader uh -huh. to someone that's read at least a chapter in this book yes. every day since 2008. I have not gone a day without reading. Right. It's not about me. Yes, right. It's yes. about understanding yes. this is my daily bread. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What's funny is, you know, every time you read the book, you get something new. Uh, yes. Something yes. else comes out of it that you didn't quite get before. Yes. It took the third year for me to understand in John chapter 6 that I am the bread. And I, I got it! Yes. <laughs> I don't know how you get yes. it. Old Testament... Yes. Stories, oh. New Testament principles. Right. Mm -hmm. Old Testament, they had the manna every day. Right. They couldn't get more they than they needed. Right. 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 And they got more on Sat the, the day before Sabbath right. for the Sabbath. Right. Yes. Right. Right. So my daily portion is my daily portion. Right. And then you see Jesus talk. He compares himself to manna. Yes. Right. We yes. need to be in the old. We need to be in the new. Yes. God has taught me a lot of things. A lot of Praise Jews have been God. ignoring the Old Testament. Yes. All this to say, this was not from a pastor. No scholar told me to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. Jesus has been my teacher. Ooh. And I think anybody should learn that Jesus is the teacher. Mm -hmm. And what's pertinent about what you're doing through this movement Every man of the house should have their own faith. 
that rock solid, that their wives, that their children, that their neighbors can say, that guy has something going on in his life. Yes. I don't know what it is. But I want it. They just lost their home and they're not distraught. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. They're going through a topsy turvy mm -hmm. moment, moment, and they're they're like joyful. What's yeah. that about? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 So. That's good. Okay. So I'm almost done. I'm almost ready to conclude. I just want to read from First Corinthians one. If you'll turn in your Bibles with me, that would be awesome. There is just something about the power of the Word of God when everybody, uh, you know, is, is in focus uh, on the same chapter, in the same verse, whatever you're talking about. Yes. Uh, let me see here. First Corinthians, I'm sorry. One. You know what? I think it's Second Corinthians. Oh, okay. <laughs> I looked it up last night and I failed to print it out. It's all right. That's all right. I'm not a scholar. You know, that's okay. I'm a seeker. I think everybody needs to be a seeker. Yes. That is so and I don't care how long you've been seeking. Uh -huh. There's always something new yes. that God has right. to reveal. Right. God. Right. I know a guy that's been following God for 30 years, and he's still seeking. He still gets something new out of his word. That's right. Here it is. First, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 24. I'm sorry, first or second? Second? I'm, I'm sorry, second Corinthians. <clears throat> chapter one. Okay. Verse four? Verse twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. Okay. You know what? I'll start at twenty-three. I always do that. I give a verse and then I'll back up. Verse twenty-three. Now I call upon God as my witness that I am telling the truth. The reason I didn't return to Corinth was to spare you from a severe rebuke. But that does not mean we want to dominate you by telling you how to put your faith into practice. All I'm trying to say is... Oh, I need to read further. Paul doesn't want to dominate the Corinthians by telling them how to put their faith into practice. He goes on, we want to work together with you so you will be full of joy for it is by your own faith that you stand firm. Okay. Yes. For many years, I relied on the pastor's faith. Mm -hmm. That's in a nutshell what my testimony is all about. Yeah. It's about learning how to have my own faith. Mm -hmm. How many people go week in and week out to their churches relying on their pastor. What am I going to hear from the man of God right. on Sunday? That's right. Let's wait for Saturday, Sunday, wherever uh -huh. it may be, to learn from our pastor that day. Right. If we learn to feed ourselves right. on a daily basis, we abide in Him. Yes, that's good. That's right. Do we have to turn to John 15? No, yeah, yeah, Let's turn to John 15. <laughs> this is pretty fun. And I'm, then I'm done. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, because this this is where it is. It's this a great is reading anyway. It was a great reading. Okay, John 15. I'll just start with. Yeah, John uh, 15. I'll start verse five and I'll read through eight. Uh, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. Amen. For apart from me, you can do nothing. 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 Mm -hmm. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me, and, uh, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Amen. So in my opinion, it is the responsibility of everybody that wants to follow Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to remain in Him. Gotcha. I don't know what that means for you all, but I can tell you for myself, remaining in Him is <laughs> digesting this, yeah. consuming right. this, right. eating this, with a voracious habit. Yes. And let me tell you, the habit doesn't come
doesn't come up overnight. Mm -hmm. It's developed over time. Yes, yes. I wasn't in it every day that first year. Right. It was every other day. It was every third day. It was whatever I could do mm -hmm. to keep up. Right. But after a while, it became my right. habit. Right. And you want this to right. be your habit because right. this is what will develop your faith. This is what will yes. let you grow. This is what will allow you to remain in Him. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for uh, having me share it. If anyone else has a testimony about, you know, um, learning to know about God, um, you're from, feel free to speak. Amen.